you all i'm black witch yaya thank you so much for tuning into this video and today we are going to be discussing the spiritual symbolism and importance when it comes to weddings now before we get started of course with my name being black witch yaya y'all probably already know i'm going to be speaking from a spiritual perspective and not so much a religious also i'm going to be speaking from what i know because as of today may 14th there are no rings on my fingers, so I cannot speak from personal experience like I usually do. But you know what I do have? Crystals that you can get from BlackWitchYaya.com. Today we have our Red Carnelian, Seven Chakra, and Ocean Grass bracelets. And you can get that from BlackWitchYaya.com along with some Florida water, which we are going to be starting with as we make our Crystal Dry Rub, which is an all-in-one smoke-free because I'm smoking it now and liquid-free because I'm adding on the Florida water now. Crystal cleanser and charger that you can add to your crystals to keep them charged. You can put them in a cute little bowl, put your crystal in there. Like if you got some dramatic props like me, you could just do -do 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 with the crystal dry rub, set it in the sun, nice and charged for you. But we're going to be making that today while we talk about the spiritual symbolism and importance of a wedding. So first things first, let's start with the obvious. A wedding is a ceremony. And by literal definition, a spiritual ceremony is a ritual observance and procedures performed at grand and formal occasions. So with a wedding being a literal ceremony, everything that leads up to it is adding to the overall power and impact of the wedding. So if you're planning a wedding or if you just want to get married soon, you can add on different rituals that you see fit to just charge and just make that ceremony even more powerful and to start your future off with your spouse on the right foot. So if you want to do a protection ritual right before, while you're at the altar with your spouse, if you guys want to stand in the middle of a salt circle, that'll be cute or add affirmations in your vows instead of saying, I hope I can always make you happy. Maybe say, I will always make you happy. I will continue to make you happy. Say it in a more of affirmative way to let you know that what's about to happen is coming from your mouth and words are powerful. Words are powerful like I told y'all before. And with this video being inspired by my previous video, he put Boodle in his vows. You guys know how powerful vows can be because you're setting your petition, you're setting your groundwork, you're setting the tone for the entire marriage. So don't go up there wishful thinking, go up there like you're manifesting. Speak as is and not as if. So because you're setting the tone beyond the wedding, your actual marriage together with that person. So make sure them vows hit, you know? And within a wedding, where are you stating your vows? At the altar. You guys may have an altar already, whether it's an ancestor altar, an Orisha altar, a money altar, a love altar. Altar is where literally the magic happens and where you set your intentions for whatever that altar may be for. So at your wedding, you're at an altar of love, we'll say. So you're setting a tone for your love in the future with that person. So make sure while you at that altar, you say what you mean and you mean what you say. Because in that moment, you have powerful footing. You're literally at an altar. Just how when you go to your ancestor altar, you treat it with respect. You make sure you give offerings to it. You make sure you speak to whoever it's for or you affirm whatever it's for. The altar is where the magic happens. With And while at that altar, you're standing in front of different energies. You're standing in front of different sources. Whoever you call the higher power, you are right there in front of them. And the veil is thinner while you're at the altar to the spirit realm. So make sure you, I'm going to say this, make sure whatever you say in the vows, you're able to keep. Because if you forsake your vows, you don't set it in front of spirit. You don't set it in front of the higher power. You set it in front of whoever you go to and call to whatever your spiritual connection is to. So let's break down some of the cutesy stuff that happens at the wedding. We all heard of the saying, something old, something new, something borrowed, something blue. But what does that really mean? Let's start with something old. So with something old, you're getting married, you are joining forces with another individual. So it's important to have a piece of yourself while you're getting married to always stay in touch with your true self like i told you guys i'm sure in the video which one i don't know i'm gonna use my hands for this items carry vibration so let's just say you have a lucky bracelet that you had since you were little and that bracelet always brought you happiness it reminds you of the good times when you were a kid it just makes you feel all around good you feel safe around it it'll be a good idea to have that bracelet with you since it has so much of your energy and connection to it 
So let's just say, for example, at my wedding, I'll probably have my amethyst crystal. And I know you're like, girl, here you go. But my very first amethyst crystal, it represents when I first discovered this spiritual world. That was the first crystal I ever purchased. It was the first crystal I ever wrapped before I even started selling crystal jewelry. It just reminds me of how like I was kind of depressed at that time. And then discovering spirituality, getting in touch with myself, it just made me overall happier. So every time I wear that crystal, I'm like, this is where it all started. I remember where I got it from. I remember what I was wearing. I just remember everything around it and it just brings me peace when I see it so probably at that wedding since that has so much of my energy and it tells so much of a story for me I'll have that with me so I can have still a sense of foundation and a sense of self when I'm joining forces with my partner you know so basically something that reminds you of you so you can always carry yourself and be in touch with yourself and know your purpose while you're going into this new journey with the whole new end well not new but the whole different individual so since we know an old item represents something from your past the new item will represent something for the future wishful thinking being optimistic having something new because the wedding and you being married is something new so having an item that's new will just represent futurism optimism to what's to come for something new i really don't know what was something new that you guys had at your wedding maybe a flower that's pinned to your dress and your partner has a flower pinned to their attire as well and you put that flower in your first home y'all buy like it carries that energy from the moment of y'all getting married to y'all buying y'all home and y'all just carry it throughout each milestone y'all make that sounded real cute that's a good idea maybe something like that but like i said i never even been to a wedding no i lied i was a flower girl when i was like three i don't remember the only reason i know this happened because of stories and there's a picture so something borrowed you want to make sure the item that you are borrowing is from an individual that has a happy and healthy marriage so if you have a friend who's continuously complaining about her husband and she's like here you go girl this is the necklace that i wore at my wedding you may not want that you may want something from your aunt and uncle who is always happy you you just feel good around them you could sense the love and she's like here you go honey this is the nail polish color that i wore in my wedding or here's the headband that i wore in my wedding something borrowed from someone that has a good marriage or you look up to how their love feels and love looks something very 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 healthy like i've been saying throughout this entire video items carry energy and vibration so we'll make sure whatever you get that is borrowed is from an individual that you truly look up to them and their relationship because you do not want that energy to be up in there heavy during that wedding ceremony and it attaches to you and your spouse something blue now what does the color blue represent in the sense of a wedding color blue can represent purity in the sense of joining forces like i said before with someone else imagination a fresh start it could represent fertility if that is a goal also with everything that i mentioned remember that intention is required so don't think that oh i got this bracelet we good make sure that you're very intentful with everything that you get and know the reason why you have it and the purpose that is going to serve to truly activate it and make it work for you don't just think well i got this blue headband we good know what that color blue truly represents what you want it to do for you and it'll be activated from there now let's circle back to my previous video look at me doing part twos and follow-ups i told you guys that you want to be careful who you tell your rituals to your practices to your goals to and all that that's the same for a wedding especially a wedding you want to make sure that you are careful who is in attendance at your wedding because you're at the altar it's during a ceremony so all those thoughts intentions mindsets feelings it's going to be all abundant in that place so you want to make sure that everyone is on the same page on the same core wishing you well wishing you the best for your marriage can't wait for y'all to have kids if you want kids can't wait for you guys to get a house if you want a house you want to make sure they are there to support you that there is your village don't invite your co-worker just because because 
someone else canceled and you ordered 30,000 plates so you need someone to get that 30,000th plate make sure whoever is there you truly want them to be a part of your journey and they know how much it means to you and your spouse and they'll just overall truly support you because there are a lot of times that people go to weddings and when they stop at by McDonald's because the food wasn't filling after the wedding they talk a junk to their friend that wasn't invited about how crazy the wedding was you don't want someone like that at your wedding you may have to hurt some feelings but honestly it is what it is like for me if I were to get married a month from now I would not have any bridesmaids because I genuinely don't have any friends and I don't want my family members to be bridesmaids because I want them to be able to sit back and enjoy the show but I don't have any friends you think I'm just about to have somebody that I knew from school just because I need a body there no it's gonna be my husband and his line brothers and me with nobody there and I say that because I know sometimes people be like, well, let me go searching so I can fill in the blanks so the pictures could look nice. Bump them pictures because it's going to hurt even more if you look at pictures one day and you're like, oh, I can't stand her now. Oh, I don't even know where she at. Oh, what happened to her? Or she ended up being a snake. You want to look at them pictures and still have a connection with those people. So make sure you look beyond the picture, but the story that will be told years from now as to why they were there and who they were for you. So I hope I didn't step on any toes with that. And if I did, let's take an ASMR break to kind of regroup, shall we? And if you need some more relaxations and wusa, you can get your Palo Santo incense from blackwitchyaya.com to reset the tone, reset the energy, use it to cleanse your space, cleanse your items, and all of that good stuff. Use it before your wedding to cleanse the energy in the room. So we talked about the color blue, but usually in a wedding, there is an individual wearing white. So we know white as well represents purity, a fresh start, represents being sacred, being at peace, being pure. And to me, from what I've seen with weddings on movies and in pictures, it seems that the white also represents letting go of things in your past as you step into the new future with that individual. All those burdens, not being a bad lady, all that other stuff, you're letting it go because now you're starting the future with this individual is a fresh start, a clean, new, open slate. And I know there's always jokes about brides wearing white and they're not a version and it's like well the color white represents a lot of more things in a body count so there's far more reasons why to a person when they want to wear white or whatever color you want to wear whatever color you feel powerful in or peaceful it could be purple because you want to feel royal do what you want to at your wedding you don't have to follow norms it's all about the vows and the individual that you are committing to you can walk down there with a barney costume it is okay. Well, there are some parts that I am purposely skipping when it comes to a wedding, especially all due to the fact that I don't want to go down the avenue of giving out relationship advice. I'm just literally talking about a wedding ceremony in general because I don't like when people feel the need to give out relationship advice like you should do this for your man. You should do this for your woman. And it's like actual women or actual men what they want done. Who is this stranger on TikTok to tell you what to do in your relationship? So I don't want to be that person. We're just talking about the actual day of save the date. Ooh, marriage, changing the last name. Speaking of changing the last name, usually in some instances, if you choose to take on that person's last name, to simplify it, it's connecting the lineage. There will be a new connection when it comes to ancestors, especially if they plan on having kids. It's like joining that tree together to create new branches. You know, throughout this entire video, the song that is playing in my head is Me, me at the altar in your white dress. What's going on across the room? It ain't nothing. I ain't fronting. Shawty coming with me. I done already gave you the keys to the range. Your last name about to change. And I ain't Miss Simmons. Got a better living. What a difference. Rev done made. Used to be the snake guy hanging out late night. But thank you guys so much for tuning into this video. I hope this gave you just a quick breakdown of the spiritual symbolism and importance of a wedding. If you guys are married, let me know some techniques and tricks and little rituals that you did at your wedding. If you are planning on renewing your vows, what will you do differently? Who would you invite differently? Would you do your vows differently? And all of that good stuff. I feel like while making this, instead of having flowers at my wedding, I want the dry rub sprinkled by the flower girl and crystal just thought of that I need to remember yeah I need to note that 
But like I always say, as above, so below, as within, so without, as a universal, the soul. Until next time, you guys, I'm Shay.